This lecture explains business record orders under FISA. Since business record orders were greatly expanded by Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act, they're often called Section 215 orders. You might also hear them called BR orders. They're also sometimes dubbed Section 501 orders, since this is Section 501 of FISA as amended. And since much of the early debate about Section 215 related to library records, it's also sometimes called the library provision of FISA. All refer to the exact same type of order. Very roughly, a FISA business record order is like a hybrid of a subpoena and a D order. Alternatively, you might think of a business record order like a super mini warrant. Let me explain why. With a business record order, there's substantive judicial review, much like a warrant or a de-order. Investigators have to get approval from a FISA court judge, and that judge does make a factual assessment. But the standard for a business record order is mere relevance, like a subpoena. It isn't probable cause, or even reasonable articulable suspicion. The relevance standard is the exact same as for a FISA pen trap order. The information has to be likely relevant to a counterterrorism investigation, or likely relevant to a counterintelligence investigation. Alternatively, it can be just general foreign intelligence information, but only if the information doesn't, quote, concern, unquote, U.S. persons. The precise meaning of that term, concern, isn't clear. Though importantly, it does seem to cover surveillance where U.S. persons are incidentally surveilled. So, a logical next question is, what can be obtained with a business record order? The statutory text reads, any tangible things available with a grand jury subpoena or a court order for production. That certainly includes all sorts of routine business records, including even medical records. That also includes any non-content communications record. So, in the context of communications, a FISA business record order can be used to obtain the same information as an ECPA D order. Recall that a D order requires reasonable, articulable suspicion. So a business record order is an easier way to get the same information. The last point I'd like to make about Section 215 is that it's been used for bulk surveillance programs. Beginning in 2006, the FISA court authorized bulk collection of domestic phone metadata. Strangely, the FISA court does not appear to have issued a comprehensive opinion on bulk surveillance under the Business Record Authority until 2013, after the Snowden leaks. Not exactly a hallmark of rigorous judicial oversight. There have been other domestic bulk surveillance programs using the FISA Business Records Authority. In what it dubbed a test trial, the NSA collected bulk cell phone location information between 2010 and 2011. There is also a program under which the CIA collects bulk domestic financial records. That's ongoing, and very little is known about it. And of course, there certainly could be other programs that just remain classified. You might be wondering, why would the NSA use FISA business record orders for some bulk surveillance programs, but FISA pen trap orders for another program? One reason is that some business records just aren't related to communications. The CIA's financial records program, for instance, simply couldn't qualify as a pen trap. Another reason is that some communications records aren't purely prospective. Think about phone records, for example. Telecoms are already planning to keep those records on file for a period, so there is a retrospective-ish quality to getting those records from telecoms. Internet metadata, by contrast, is purely prospective. Most internet service providers just weren't retaining the types of data that the NSA was interested in. Yet another reason is that, as we've already seen, 
Kalia requires more than a pen trap order to track cell phones. That caveat might also apply to FISA pen trap orders. There's a final, more cynical reason why the NSA has preferred business record orders to pen trap orders. Recall that if prosecutors want to introduce FISA pen trap evidence against a surveillance target, they have to provide notice, and the target can move to suppress. FISA business record orders don't come with those statutory protections. So, by using business record orders for bulk surveillance programs, there's statutorily less transparency and less opportunity to challenge the programs. In closing, let me give a little data on FISA business record applications. Once again, the data doesn't much reflect bulk surveillance programs, but it does shed some light on individual orders. The trend in this graph that I'd like to emphasize is that in roughly 2008, online services began to resist a broad interpretation of the government's National Security Letter Authority. Specifically, online services stopped giving out electronic messaging metadata in response to NSLs. So, the government began using business record orders where it would have previously used NSLs. Accessing message metadata now appears to be the most common use for individual business record orders. The next lecture covers national security letters. They aren't part of FISA itself, but they're very closely related, and they pose many similar challenges.